uh, in the coaching club American Oaks. Uh, we can only hope that it uh, matches for excitement. Last year's coaching club American Oaks were Abel Tasman and the late threw down down the stretch at Saratoga. This year, we're expecting a pretty short field, which uh, could be advantage to the, the horse with more tactical speed. But either way, I think we're uh, really in for a, uh, an interesting showdown here with Mana Moy Girl. Four for four this year, Matt. Three straight grade one wins. And Midnight Basu, who's four for five with her only loss coming in the Kentucky Oaks, where she was favored, finished third, had a little uh, disadvantage of the trip and the track condition. So round two, Monomoy Girl, Midnight Basu, the most accomplished two three-year-old fillies in a very strong division in American racing. Yeah, Brian, and and you know, not long ago we weren't expecting Midnight Pursue in the Coaching Club American Oaks. That was not the original plan, but after uh, but after her big win and she came out of the race so well, new trainer uh, Steve Asmussen said, "Hey, she, she, this girl's ready to run." So they're putting her in the Coaching Club American Oaks, and and uh, you know. I guess Asmussen would know he's trained some pretty darn good uh, fillies over the years. You know, we think about Gunrunner and some others, but, you know, with uh, Rachel Alexandra and my Miserelia and so many good fillies that he's trained, um, if he thinks she's ready to run again, we got to think about it a lot. But but face it, Monomoy Girl, a, a horse who has never run a bad race in her career, you, know, you always talk about, Horses, you know, they can't keep running well. They can't keep running well all the time, but she never has not run well. So it, it's it's going to be a, a great race to see. That's right, man. Monomoy Girl, the daughter of Tapazar, uh, is seven of eight lifetime and her only loss. By the way, she she began her career. Indiana Grand people are, are proud of Monomoy Girl because she began her career at Indiana Grand on the turf last summer. So look where she's gone since uh since that uh debut race at indiana grant she's seven of eight lifetime her only loss was uh, was a tough loss last fall at churchill downs uh, to road to victory otherwise she'd be perfect in eight starts four for four this year she's done different things coming from out of it when she broke poorly leading the hallway stalking and pouncing she's gone back from two turns to one turn now she'll be back up to two turns she's never raced at saratoga before and uh, she probably hasn't faced the very best from Midnight Basu yet either. Uh, as I mentioned, I think the Kentucky Oaks uh, wasn't her best setup. Mike Smith on Midnight Basu, uh, uh, Florence Giroux on Monomoy Girl. This should be an interesting matchup. I don't know if it'll be a great betting race. This time, Monomoy Girl should go favored, but I think Midnight Basu is going to get a lot of action too. Like I said, probably a, a short field in here. But uh, I think Mike Smith is going to be uh, watching Monomoy Girl the whole way. And I expect a closer decision than as what happened in Kentucky for the Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if it's going to be a great betting race. I think it would be pretty tough to, uh, as a better and a handicapper to throw both of those horses out and find a big, big price. Because if you throw both of those horses out in the wind spot, you're going to get a really nice uh, price. But boy, I. I don't know. It would be really hard to imagine either uh, Mana My Girl or uh, Midnight Basu not finding the winner circle. Yeah, this is this is a race about those two, really. And uh, I expect them to run one, two. I will not be touting any 85 to one shots in this one, Matt. Uh, I'm sticking with Mana Moy Girl this time uh, because of the tactical speed. But I really expect them to uh, probably have a photo finish decide one in the coaching club American Oaks. Exciting stuff in a great division, a three-year-old Philly division that just continues to impress uh, late spring and this summer so far. So the coaching club American Oaks is the headliner. But how about Saturday's Diana map? Because Chad Brown, uh, while well, Saul Cuman, by the way, uh, is now part owner of Midnight Pursue as well, and he's going to put both of those Phillies into the coaching club American Oaks. Chad Brown is running two really impressive looking turf mares. I'm talking about a raving beauty and sister Charlie. We expect both in Saturday's Diana. And uh, I'm excited about that one as well. Oh, for sure, Brian. And, and you know, when I was talking about that opening weekend also uh, before, another thing to talk about with that opening weekend is that it's a little bit of a snapshot of the 
of the trainer race at Saratoga, which the last few years has been a battle between Todd Pletcher and Ch- Chad Brown. And, and Todd squeaked out a win last year, but we're talking about Chad winning so many races on the turf and having so many, so many quality horses to enter in all of those turf races and Pletcher on the other hand with the two-year-old. So Pletcher's got a chance to get a shot, uh, get off to a great start in the Schuylerville and the Sanford. And, and uh, Chad has a great chance to get started in the, in the Diana and the Lake George. That's right. And, and getting back to that Diana, I think a Raven beauty and sister Charlie are probably the two most impressive turf fillies I've seen this year in America. So it'll be really interesting to see them match up. They've been terrific uh, since uh, coming over from Europe, uh, the Diana, the coaching club, American Oaks, all the others, the two year old stakes, the Lake George folks, all I can say is enjoy opening weekend at Saratoga. It starts Friday. Matt, you enjoy opening weekend at Saratoga as well. Thank you, Brian. I will.